Brain health has been very popular in the news lately, and this podcast is for you if you've ever had brain fog, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, CTE, any of these issues. This is the podcast where we're going to jump into the latest research from Dr. Dale Bredesen, Dr. Daniel Amen, Dave Asprey of the Bulletproof Diet, so many other people, all the minds that are really out there paving the way, blazing a path for new research, new strategies that are actually working to get your brain optimized and working at its highest, highest level. The Brain Builders Podcast is just for you. So get a notebook, get a pen, and get ready to open up your mind and get back to the person that you were meant to be. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Brain Builders Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. John DeWitt. <laughs> and today, I was supposed to be on a Facebook Live while I did the podcast, but unfortunately, technical issues and timing did not work out for that because the um, event, I'm at the Serve X event with Manny Lopez, where he is raising money for orphans. He himself was an orphan and uh, has some really touching stories about some of the nightmares he had to go through. And uh, if you want to um, donate to his cause, it is supportorphans.com. There's also a link in the podcast description. I also um, was going to discuss um, or was just going to have you follow me around and just make it kind of fun and whatever as I was talking to people. But because of the timing, we're actually not at lunch yet. We were supposed to be at lunch, I thought, at noon, but lunch does not start till 1230. So I am outside of the um, Wyndham Hotel, and uh, they are inside listening to one of my friends, Greg Reed, speak. Um apologize <laughs> for the confusion, but here, let me see what we can do. And, and I also was thinking about, you know, why would I put the um, Cervex event on the podcast? And it's actually because it's for orphans to raise money for orphans. And it just kind of hit me last night that sadly, if, if one of our parents is suffering with cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, dementia, it's almost like we become orphans because they start to not remember who we are or we're, we dread the day when we show up to visit them and they don't know who we are. And it's it's almost like we're the orphans. It's a really sad way to look at it, but that, that is the similarity that I, that I realized last night. So that is why I wanted to um, include this on the podcast. Now I'm going to something up real quick. Um, let's see. Um, so now we're going to jump back into Dave Asprey's book, and we're going to talk And His book is Headstrong, the Bulletproof Plan to Activate and Boost Your Brain in just two weeks. So now we're going to talk about the mito, mighty mitochondria. So one and a half billion years ago, the earth was covered with warm seas and the air was filled with terrible poison. Oxygen, uh, oxygen that killed most of the living organisms exposed to it. A few hardy species of bacteria, however, managed to adapt to these harsh conditions by learning how to use oxygen to make energy. These bacteria were able to take, take oxygen and create a substance known today as adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. One of those species, which is believed to have been a small purple bacterium, eventually became embedded in another type of cell. Over the next billion years, those combined cells evolved to form animals and then humans. This ancient bacterium is still within us and continues to create ATP, the energy that our cells need in order <laughs> to thrive. And new research shows that even today, these bacteria are in charge of what we do to a greater extent than scientists ever expected. In fact, they call the shots on how you feel on a second-by-second -second basis. 
what do we call these bacteria today? I think you might know. Mitochondria. In case you didn't save enough reasons to talk to your mother every Sunday, here's one more. She's the one who gave you all of your mitochondria. Many people think that we receive an equal 50% of our genetics from our mothers and 50% from our fathers, but we are actually more genetically similar to our mothers. When each of us was conceived, both the eggs and the sperm contain mitochondria, but the mitochondria in the sperm, which powered its mighty swim toward the egg, got left behind when the sperm's tail dropped off as it burrowed into the egg. That means that the mitochondrial DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, and the fertilized egg that became you came exclusively from your mom. Your yoga teacher talks about divine female energy, either, uh, neither of you probably realizes that she's actually referring to these ancient bacteria. Ancient bacteria, divine female energy. Mitochondria seem pretty mysterious and magical, don't they? Let's take a moment and understand these tiny powerhouses. Mitochondria are cigar shaped parts of your cells bound by a double membrane with the inner membrane tucked and folded inside the outer membrane. The average human cell contains between 1,000 and 2,000 mitochondria. The cells in the parts of our body that require the most energy, the brain, retina, and heart, contain about 10,000 mitochondria each. That means you have more than one quadrillion mitochondria within your body. That's more than the number of bacteria living in your gut. And in fact, our entire respiratory system, our heart, lungs, and blood, exists to deliver oxygen to our mitochondria so that they can make the energy ATP, <laughs> ATP that keeps us alive. Our mitochondria determine how your body reacts to the world around you. When your mitochondria become more efficient, your mental performance increases. The better your mitochondria are at creating energy, the better your, inner, your body and mind will perform. The more you can do and the better you will feel while doing it. ATP, the energy of life. The most important thing your mitochondria do is extract energy from the food you eat, combine it uh, with oxygen, and make ATP. We've only known about ATP for about 100 years, and there's still a lot we need to learn. But we do know that ATP stores the energy required to power us both physically and mentally. Nearly all of your cells need ATP in order to function. Without it, they couldn't survive, and neither could you. The energy production that takes place within your mitochondria is therefore the single most important function in your body. ATP is your life's blood, or more accurately, the reason for your blood's life. Think of it this way. You could live for at least three weeks without food. You could live for about three days without water. But without ATP, you would die within seconds. The energy stored in ATP is released when it is used as fuel by the body. When your body uses ATP, well, it breaks down, creating two byproducts, adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, and phosphate. Remember, ATP is adenosine triphosphate, meaning it contains three phosphate bonds. When two of these bonds are broken off into adenosine diphosphate and one lonely phosphate, energy is released. That energy is the power of you. And those quadrillions of little embedded bacteria actually control you. After this process is complete, something amazing and elegant happens. Your body reattaches a phosphate molecule to the ADP, recreating ATP for it to be used as fuel and broken down again into ADP and P, re releasing more energy. In essence, our mitochondria are the original molecular engines using the same molecules to, to regenerate energy over and over. It's a much more efficient way of creating energy than making each unit of ATP from scratch. If you're my father's age, this concept might sound familiar. It's strikingly similar to the process of a car engine turning over as it did as it idles or accelerates. The first thing that, that he did when he got his 57 Chevy was to figure out how to make it go a little faster. For my age, it doesn't sound so different from the methods my hacker friends and I used to overclock our gaming PCs so they would also go faster while still war dialing in the background. But our mitochondria are a heck of a lot more powerful than a car engine or a computer processor. There are about 1 billion molecules of ATP in each Even though you have roughly 100 trillion cells, a normal person has only about 1.75 ounces or 50 grams of ATP in their entire body at any one time. Each mitochondrial ATP cycle can create about 600 ATP molecules per second at maximum demand. That means that if you eat 2,500 calories a day, your mitochondria recycle and reuse those 1.75 ounces of ATP so many times that it's the equivalent of creating ATP in the course of the day. In 
mean, case creating energy for every system and function in your bo- entire body wasn't a big enough job for your mitochondria. They're also in charge of other essential. Hold on. Uh, uh, such as transmitting signals between cell cellular di- differentiation, the process by which one type of cell transforms into another, and maintaining the cycle of cell growth and cell death. When you think about it, mitochondria create all the power, control communication, and decide what lives and lives and dies and when. These little bacteria are actually calling the shots in your biology. I've started to see my own body as a big walking petri dish supporting a quadrillion mitochondria doing whatever they want. Your mitochondria have other skills too. Mitochondria can change their shape and size, and some mitochondrial functions are unique to specific types of cells. For example, only the mitochondria in your liver contain an enzyme needed to decoxify ammonia, a waste product produced when the liver breaks down a protein. The different parts of your body also use ATP from your mitochondria for their own specific functions. Your heart, for example, uses its energy to pump blood to your brain and the rest of your body. And your brain uses its energy to to think, learn, remember things, and make decisions. Of course, the extra mitochondria in the brain requires lots of oxygen to create ATP, so if the mitochondria in the heart are not producing energy efficiently, your brain will suffer from a lack of energy before the rest of your body does. Cells like the ones in your brain, heart, and retina that are literally studded with mitochondria are the first at risk when you have less energy available than you need than you need or when those cells waste the energy they were meant to use. When neurons have energy problems, you get cognitive impairment and brain fog. When cardiocytes or heart cells have mitochondrial defects, you get heart dysfunction and feel tired. When myocytes or muscle cells can't make energy, you see symptoms of fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. When your enterocytes or intestinal cells have energy problems, you see leaky gut and autoimmune diseases. And the list goes on. Critical systems in your body all rely on mitochondria to work. Or more accurately, your mitochondria control all the critical systems in your body. Are you convinced yet that you need to mind your mitochondria to quote my good friend Terry Walls, a physician who wrote Minding My Mitochondria? She hacked her own mitochondria to reverse progressive multiple sclerosis. The exciting thing about mitochondria is that these essential structures are not in the least bit static. The mitochondria in every part of the body are constantly changing. They can be damaged, destroyed, improved, renewed, or outright hacked. There are many things you can do to make your existing mitochondria work better and even to literally grow more of these power plants in your cells. Dave says that his own mitochondrial function has been a focus of his biohacking for years, and he has developed a wide array of habits to improve their function. In fact, every one of the biohacks he's found that has an immediate impact on his energy is a mitochondrial hack, including the ones that reversed is toxic mold exposure and chronic Lyme disease. If he's starting to feel any concentration, feel his concentration waver, he just implements one of his tools for improving mitochondrial performance, and soon he's back in charge. In other words, when he wants to kick more ass, he ramps up his mitochondrial function. As he types this, <laughs> he's on a stack of mitochondrial energizing supplements because it's almost midnight. He has 4,000 more words to write before he goes to sleep, and he's recording two episodes of Bulletproof Radio tomorrow morning, so his mitochondria have to kick ass to get all this done. So share his post, uh, most important tools for improving mitochondrial performance later on, including the ones that he used while writing it. All right. So... That is my Brain Builders podcast today. A little more input. We're going to do the Facebook Live if my battery's still working. Later on from the Servex event, you can donate to that in the um, link in the po- in the description of the podcast, as well as you can join the wait list for my next Brain Builders Masterclass that we're having so much fun in. Um, This is your host, Dr. John DeWitt. Thanks for listening to the Brain Builders Podcast, and we will see you next time.